This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Nightwing News. It's another month. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, is... I'm Kristen. All right. So we're going to discuss this uh, month's uh, issue, Nightwing number 60. Well, should be Nightwing 60. Yep. And then you got a twofer on the Batman the Animated Series episodes, Robin's Reckoning Part 1 and Part 2. And two. Yep. Uh, great. Awesome. It's all about the grace in here. All right. So, what do you want to talk about first? The comic or the- I guess let's start with the comic since it's only one thing. Yeah. So, what did you what did you think? I mean, you know, not bad for a run that we're all still like, uh, why still with the amnesia? Why? Um, why are we still here? Yeah, I mean, I- yeah, I mean, it's certainly. I mean, I don't know this villain that is kind of living fire. I mean, that's that's certainly interesting. I mean, um, I'm enjoying it on a certain level. I mean, I like. I've always liked Dan Jurgens' uh, writing, especially like when he was on Superman back in the day, and he did a run not too long ago again. But I don't know. It's on the other, th- I'm kind of getting a little bored with this. For the first time, I think since like Dick Grayson got his own ongoing series in 1996, I'm just like, I don't know. Is this worth? Yeah, that's it? true. That's true. It's it's not moving forward. It's, it's weird because sometimes comics move forward really slow and sometimes really fast. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're right. It kind of feels like it's moving forward pretty slowly right now. I mean, if they want to keep him with the whole amnesia thing, I get that, but I would rather him just put the costume back on himself without these other people, maybe, and just, even if he wanted to work with them, if they weren't wearing the costume, if he put, I'd rather see him put on the Nightwing costume and be like, okay, I'm going to try to be a hero, even if I can't remember how to do it. Yeah, that's true. That would seem more that's true. to me. Well, I think maybe it feels like it's kind of stagnating or in the same place because... Every issue, he always has to say, like, oh, yeah, I was hurt, and now I don't have any memories, so. Yeah. Hurt. But even if he put on the costume and tried without his memory, that just seems more Dick Grayson to me. It just, you know, that he'd be, you know, it would just come that naturally to him. Yeah. Yeah. I know, and I keep waiting for these. <laughs> nice, sweet cup. Um, I keep waiting for the, I guess it's one of those problems that, you know, whatever it is, what it is, but it's one of those things that I feel is actually frequently an issue in the superhero comics is it's not really that hard to figure out these people's secret identities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it kind of seems that they keep making the cops keep making comments that, oh gee, what's up with this cabbie? Isn't it weird that he knows all this stuff? And I keep thinking back to um Gosh, it's been several years, but um, Injustice and how there's that one panel in Injustice where Barbara is, I can't remember now if she's doing Oracle stuff for Batgirl, uh, but she says something to her dad and he's like, yeah, of course I knew that you were a superhero since you went out with Dick Grayson the first night. And she was like, oh, yeah, well, dad, how did you know? And he goes, because I'm a detective. <laughs> and I thought that that was always really perfect. And I a little bit feel like these guys, you know, particularly Sepienza, I'm waiting for him to have his, like, I'm a detective moment where he just puts, like, why is this cabbie so good at this and want to help? And he also has a really bad head injury. Yeah. You would think, maybe this cabbie is... <laughs> you, would, you would think maybe they would, at least he would suspect that he's night, that, that, you know, this cabbie is Nightwing. Maybe he will, and maybe, you know, if someone figures it out, maybe they'll get killed or something. But right, sometimes I mean, it feels like they're working the whole. It's mainstream superhero comics. You have to have, I guess, a somewhat of a suspension of disbelief because it's like you know, you right? Have... Yeah, so that it's 
how they does, really work the like people willingly don't want to know or whatever like willingly ignore that they know it yeah that's why the theory is like commissioner gordon knows bruce wayne is batman but he doesn't want to put two and two together just because right. plausible deniability right yes and that makes and that makes sense oh mr mayor you want me to stop batman well i don't know who he is yeah yeah but i mean yeah. The st- I mean, the story was all right. Uh... Right, yes, no, it was. I'm just waiting for these detectives to have their, like, hey. But like I said, I could, even if he can't remember a thing, I just think Dick would, like, try to put on a costume and, you know. I mean, it seems like he's getting this heroic instinct back. I, I would have... Oh, definitely. I would think he would want to protect his, his new life and at least put a mask on. I know, and I'm just afraid something's going to happen to her. I don't know. Oh, his girlfriend? Yeah. Maybe. I, I'm thinking something's either going to happen to her or one of those cops. Oh, if, yeah, one of the Nightwings. Yeah, so, someone's going to get hurt or killed, and yeah, that's going to... He's like, oh, I, I guess I don't want to, but I have to put this suit back on. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I but, like, we, but like we've been saying, I, I was... You know how I keep saying, oh, I wonder if you know they're keeping him this way because of you know Tom King's story, but Tom King, they just announced it, what, yesterday or something. He's leaving Batman early. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think it was yesterday you sent me that. Yeah, so it's very I don't stuff is up over at DC. I mean, I don't know what what their deal is, obviously, but it seems like things are. It's so weird. It seems like things are always changing. I think and as soon as you have, it's like they put out that big press release that about Tom King's Batman, and then just it feels like just days later he's like, oh yeah, I'm leaving soon. What? <laughs> Yeah, because the whole plan was him to stay to like, you know, issue 105. And now I think, I don't know if it's 75 is going to be his last issue, which is only like four issues away now. Because, yeah, 70. Like, I thought though somebody said 85. Oh, I don't know. I thought At the I, end of the year, maybe? I thought I saw 75. Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Oh, I don't know. But, yeah, either way, I mean, it's coming soon because, yeah, 71 just came out last week. So. Right. And I don't really understand the. Uh, the industry, so I don't know if that's the kind of thing that, like, it's good, and he's, like, moving on to some... I guess I don't understand what it is, like, because it's not my industry, so I don't understand what it means when people are moving on to something better. Because I know some of the Nightwing writers, you know, they were doing Nightwing, and then it's like, oh, I'm moving on to something better. But, you know, of course, us as huge Nightwing fans, I'm like, well, what do you mean better than Nightwing? <laughs> yeah, I don't, know if it, I don't know if it was his choice or not, but also I, he was getting death threats for Heroes in Crisis for what he did to Wally. So, I mean, unless, the, you know, unless he's leaving because of that and they just don't want to, you know, give the haters, you know, more, yeah. more fuel to be like, oh, yeah, if you, you know, if you give someone death threats, they'll leave. So maybe they're just like, oh, yeah, he found more. You know, his work that's, pretty mess- that's pretty messed up, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I there's a lot of, I mean, there's some decisions in comics I don't agree with these days, but yeah, you don't send somebody death threats over over story fictional stories, people. Yeah, no, that's that's not that's not good. And I think it wouldn't be, I feel like it wouldn't be such a problem maybe if fans, if we us fans maybe weren't always so intense um, and stuff. I think one of the things that and it took me a while to accept it, is because these are long-running characters, there's a lot of different interpretations, and it's okay to say, I don't like that interpretation, and I'm just like not going to do that one, and just read something else, or wait for it to come back, instead of being like, ah, oh, you're ruining my character. Um yeah, that, yeah, that is the weakness of like mainstream superheroes is like they can't age, grow and age too much because eventually they're you know they're gonna re not re- mm-hmm. that, but yeah they only you know they're not gonna let Dick Grayson ever get to forty years old. Right. Yeah. I mean they won't even let Bruce get to forty years uh, old. Even though he could totally be forty years old. I was cracking up because there was an article about what's his name? Oh, Robert Pattinson is probably gonna be Batman in whenever the heck this random Batman movie that they keep talking about comes out. And it said in there that he would be the second youngest Batman because he'll be 33 or 34. And they said that Christian Bale was the youngest and he was 31 when the um, the Dark Knight came out. And that kind of, I just thought that was so funny that it was like, whoa, he was so young at 31. Because half the time, I mean, because for a long time they tried to have that myth that like Bruce was always 29. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 
in the comics. And it's like, Hollywood is full of young people, and they don't even cast someone that young to be Batman. Yeah, I thought I thought Robert Pattinson was younger, but I guess uh, I know Lilith was saying he, may, you know, he has a baby face. So I, 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 don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, you want him to be like a young Bruce Wayne, right? Oh yeah, because I think uh, I don't think they like the. And that was part of the reason that Ben Affleck wasn't going to do it because yeah, he's like, I'm too old. <laughs> I, I think that's the that's one of the I don't know if that's one of the reasons they think they're you know Justice League and all that failed is because Batman was too. He was like how much older than everyone else, even Superman. So yeah, I guess they're going young. I think they're going the Marvel route now. You go kind of young, and you know you can get at least ten year, you know, ten years out of these people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I'm sure it'll be. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, because the thing is, anymore, it really needs to be a decent movie to begin with. I mean, obviously, we know. I mean, okay, Ben Affleck has done like some not so hot movies, like Geely or whatever it was. But I mean, he's also Ben. I mean, he can act. <laughs> um, so. I mean- I mean, you can Obviously. like the problem with Batman versus Superman was not that Ben Affleck was Batman. <laughs> no, no, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, you can have the best actor in the world, but you have to give them good material. I mean, but yeah, Batman v Superman. I mean, there were story problems there, and they tried to fit too much in there. You know, the first meeting, yeah. Batman Superman, then the big fight, and then Doomsday, then the death is. You know, they tried. So, to fit yeah, and that and yeah. that. I- and that like, I think Robert Pattinson will be fine. If yeah. the movie's not good, it's not going to be because of him. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I think I sp- we're supposed to get more of, a, you know, we're going to get like more Batman doing detective work. You know, I think it's going to be more noir. So it should be better, I think. Yeah. Oh, actually, yes, you weren't. And shoot, he's on Twitter. I forget the guy's name. I should look it up, but I don't have the program right here. But someone at the Batman conference uh, that we were at last month uh, did a a good look at I want to say his name was Jason. Anyway, he did a good look at the Batman movies and sort of how detective-y are they? And really the movies are not that no. detective-y. And actually like the best one for detective was like the 1966 Batman movie <laughs> where they actually did some detective work cuz now it's so much gadgets and that kind of and that kind of thing so. I, I was gonna say i mean there was a tiny bit in those michael keaton ones but not real i mean you know in the first one he figured out what chemicals the joke mm-hmm. was using in the second one it was like you know looking in the the penguins background and stuff but yeah i mean it's more you know i think they think oh we have to have action but it's it's like it's batman you gotta have both you gotta have detective work gotta have you know mm-hmm. detective work action the gadget yeah and look, this issue so good. Okay. We're we're off topic again. Yes. Well, we'll talk about movies someday. If there's ever a Nightwing movie, we'll have so much to talk about. But yeah. I feel like that's kind of the bummer. Is like there's not as ton to talk about. I know. That's what I'm thinking. I'm, I mean, hopefully, like I'm just waiting for some sort of shoe to drop. Put him, put him back in the suit. Like I said, even if he doesn't have his memory, put him back in the suit. Although, speaking of the suit, did you see that link? I think I shared it. Um, they confirmed Titan season two. We're gonna get a Nightwing suit. Oh, I did. Yes, yes. I think you might have sent me that too. Yep, he's yeah. gonna have this. He's gonna have this suit. Yep. It would be interesting if he gets his memory back gradually, and then he like puts the different suits on, and then like suddenly starts to get a lot of memories of like, oh hey, I remember what I did in this suit. Oh, what? So he wears them in order. For he starts off with the disco suit. And- yeah, and then he's like, oh, I remember what I was doing in that. Of course, like, why would you have a disco suit when it's not the '80s anymore? But whatever. I still, di- I still dig it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I thought it was cool how he was like Nightwing Prime and Red Nightwing. So I want to see, is he going to call the one who wears his disco suit Disco Nightwing? Because that would be sweet. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Hey, Stripes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, Titan Season 2, I can't wait. We're getting, in, we're getting Nightwing. I think they're doing Judas Contract, some form of the Judas Contract. Deathstroke. Wait, sorry. This is... In Titans, I, I think Titans season two, yeah. I th- well, I think I think Young Justice and Titans season two are both doing like their version. Oh, right, yes, Young Justice, yeah, yeah. When does Young Justice start back up? Is it in June or not till July? I don't know. I thought it was June, but uh, I know Swamp Thing's starting up in like another week or so too. Okay, yeah, yeah, right, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I really think they're gonna do. Well, I mean, they kind of have to. I mean, they have thirteen episodes. So then they just brought Tara on, and we saw that was like the cliffhanger. That she's bad. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think yeah, Titans and Young Justice are both doing Judas contracts. So, guess we'll see who does it better. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Well, I feel like they might do it at some point, but is 
I mean, I feel like they still need to do, they need to do Terror of Trigon to finish off. I mean, because everyone's, like, in Trigon's mind or whatever. Yeah, I just wonder, I wonder if they'll just do it in the first episode back or, you know, something like that. But they cast Batman, too, for Titans. Yeah, I did, I did see that, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> we'll see how that, we'll see how that one goes. Too gritty. Yeah. <laughs> But speaking of Batman, do you want to talk uh, the animated series episodes? Yeah, for sure. Wow. So, Robin's Reckoning, amazing. Mm. Um, I mean, I think everybody knows it won the first Emmys, I think, for the animated series. Mm. Um, so, yeah, you know, that's the episode that won at the that won at the Emmys. So, the Origin of the King. Everyone agrees. Everyone agrees. It's awesome. Yeah, the Origin of the King, of course. <laughs> Yeah, even the even the award people. Uh, yeah. So I was cracking. I was cracking up when I first started. I'd forgotten how it starts at the beginning when Dick's like, "Man, if I know we'd just be sitting around here, I would have brought my homework." I was like, "Ah, I feel you. I was that person in college too." I'm like, "God, if I know I have to sit around, I wish I brought a book or like could do something useful." That actually, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Lucky for me, you're such a great conversationalist. <laughs> and when he said that, I was waiting for Batman to again go. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, but then, but then the guys show the the contract saboteurs showed up. Yeah, for the construction site. Yeah, they're fighting them one well, day. Yeah. Still, yeah. Who do you work for? <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> Billy Baron. <laughs> Billy Baron. Robin, go get the Batmobile. Right. Yeah. Like, and then, of course, all he had to do was go back to the cave and type in Billy Marin and hit enter. And then it was like, oh, this is Tony Zuko. Like, really? Feels. Well, I mean, well, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, the computer is in the back cave. It's not like, you know. Right, I know. But it's like Batman didn't want him to know. And he took him back to the back cave where all he had to do was type Billy Marin into the computer. <laughs> I mean, I he thought Dick wasn't going to think of that. I don't know. Batman should know better than that. <laughs> but that whole thing with Batman interrogating the thug, I mean, that I mean, that, he didn't come out, he didn't come out and say it, but I mean, he he inferred it very strongly. I, you know, for a kid, you know, for a kid's cartoon, he's just like, it's you, me, and thirty stories. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he is, yeah, and the guy's like, you can't leave me hanging, and he's like, I'm not the police. Yes, I can. I was like, dang, Batman's hardcore. <laughs> Billy Marin. Yeah. yeah. Tony Zuko, so then we get the origin, you know, Dick's origin at the circus, and yeah, yeah. I think they did the death of his parents well, like you know, they didn't show it, but they, you know, all of a sudden they show the swing, and then it comes back, and the rope's broken. Yeah, no, that's yeah. I mean, that was good. Yeah, that was good. It's a good way to be like, whoa, but also not graphic for the kids. And I love how Commissioner Gordon looks exactly so. the same, except his hair is red now instead of <laughs> gray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I th that I had forgotten because I don't think they named the elephants in his original, you know, 1940 story. But I read people talk about Zitka a lot, and then when they, I was like, oh, that's right. It's the animated series that first gave the elephant that name. I think maybe. I yeah, I don't know. I know there was an elephant, and what was it? Bat it was either Batman Year Three or Lonely Place of Dying, which was what late 80s or early 90s. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if they named it there or not. Yeah, and I think in some later ones, because there are a couple different names of elephants. I have to go back and look at some of the Titans ones, uh, but I think sometimes when Dick goes back to the circus later, he meets back up with the elephant, and yeah. he, the elephant has a name. Yeah, because they did a lot of Dick's origin in uh, yeah. Batman Year 3. That was like the arc right before Tim Drake showed up, you know, shows up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tim with, yeah, yeah. Tim, Tim was in so, the, Tim was in those flashbacks too, you know, him his parents took him to the circus. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. Although they didn't bring it well, because in the animated series, the next Robin is kind of like a Tim Drake, Jason Todd smush. So, well, yeah, they, they, they did at the circus. They gave Tim Jason's origin because they didn't want to explain the kids about you know, about you know, or Robin getting beat to death by the Joker. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. Except then later they just have the Joker like turn him into a mini Joker instead, which is pretty. Uh, yeah. Crazy. Although I guess that was technically in a different series. <laughs> oh, Batman Beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was technically Batman Beyond, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I don't know. I mean, yeah, Robin's Reckoning. It's pretty. It's pretty great. It starts out kind of funny, and then you know you have that very dramatic 
cliffhanger when Robin's running out and he's like, I'm not gonna do what he says, Alfred. Maybe not ever again. And yeah. Alfred's like, Alfred's sad face. You're like, oh, gas. But, you know, by the end, BFFs again. Yeah, I do, I do I do in that first episode I do like um the like the flashbacks you know when Dick moves in and then uh oh I, I love when like Batman goes to uh Zuko's uh uncle uh was it Stromberg mm, yeah and he's threatening him and then you know the guards see Batman outside start shooting at him and- yes yeah he goes to his uncle his uncle's house um I like that part where they in- where uh. Pop Haley introduces Bruce Wayne and he knocks over his popcorn and then he spills his pop. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so, pretty cla- how clumsy. I could not be the Batman. Yeah, pretty cl- pretty classic. Well, and then you see Bullock and he's just like a regular policeman wearing his wearing his blue outfit. And you're like, ah. That's a nice continuity there. I mean, I'm sure that's the first time they showed him as a beat cop, but yeah, remember in Mask of yeah, the Yeah, I forget. Yeah, I'm not sure what... Well, well, Mask of the Phantasm, when they did a flashback, Bullock was a beat cop in that, too, so... Mm-hmm. Yep. And I think the commissioner's hair is not white. I think his hair is brown. So you're like, ooh, the passage of time. Was it like orange or red or something? Yeah, I mean, I think it's supposed to be brown, but it kind of looks like orange. <laughs> but... Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I just love the attention to detail. You know, like I was saying, like, you know, when he, uh, Batman's like breaking into Stromberg's house and he almost gets Zuko, you know, he jumps on the car and everything, but he's wearing the old belt with like, you know, the pouches and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I feel like, because Kevin Conroy is such a good voice actor, I think his voice, he he does a little bit something different with his voice when he's doing the flashbacks as Bruce Wayne to make him sound, you know, 10 years younger. I and think, so that's cool. I think, Con- yeah, Conroy always did stuff like that, I think, because uh, today mm-hmm. me and Luca were watching uh, Night of the Ninja. Yeah. They did those flashbacks, and yeah, like, Bruce Wayne's voice sounded much higher. So I right, think- yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're right, yeah, because that has a, a part in the past, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So, he's doing, he's doing, he's doing good stuff. Um, and then, we get Dick going after Zuko, yeah. trying to go after Zuko on his own in the flashbacks for, you know, first. And yep, yeah, showing his that's what good. Batman, Batman reveals his yeah. secret. How bad do you want Tony Zuko? Yep, and that he's, and that there, he has this sort of de- detective or he at least has superhero instincts because he's not afraid to ride the bus to the sketchy part of town. <laughs> Then he saves and then that awesome little phone tracker that, oh, put, yeah. that he puts on that he puts on the phone feels very nineties. Oh yeah, trace the call. And Zuko is just so ridiculous when he is like shooting while the merry-go-round is moving. Take your chance, yes. boys. <laughs> it's like wow, you're really an idiot. <laughs> It's like, why does anyone work for you? Yeah, but yeah. Right, yeah. You're, you're, you're just like, I'm openly going to shoot at someone while you're all on a merry-go-round. Great idea. But I love how Dick was like all mad at Batman, but then he's like, I'm going to find you, Zuko. I was trained by the best. <laughs> yep. And then he's kind of mad at Zuko, and then Batman's like, no, don't. He's like, you were right. And then as soon as Batman's like, no, it wasn't that. I was afraid. What if he took you too? And then it's like, oh. Now we're best friends again. <laughs> I just yeah, but I just love that voice he puts on at the end when he's threatening Zuko. He's like, yeah, just waiting. Yeah, yes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because not yeah. Batman was injured, so I guess Robin was worried Zuko was going to kill him too. So yeah, I love that scene. You right. Know, yep. Dicks on the motorcycle, it crashes in. He just grabs Zuko and drags him down the down the pier. Yep. On, behind the motorcycle. Yeah, that was. Pretty- that was pretty crazy. Also, when he jumps the drawbridge over that boat. Oh, that yeah. Was, that was ridiculous. <laughs> Nothing could have I mean, it was, it was awesome, but super dangerous. Oh, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I think that was just nothing that stopped me from coming for my vengeance. Right, I know. I was like, that really is defined the laws of gravity. It's like, you can't wait 30 what? seconds. <laughs> no, time is of the essence. <laughs> I mean, it kind of was because. Since yeah, you go injured, Batman, yeah, man, but yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty fun. But that also brings me back to 
something that I think is really cool and useful. I don't know if you remember. I, yeah, it was in the U.S. It was several years ago now, probably hmm. at least six or seven, where they did that Batman live show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, did, did it come near you at all? Did you see it? No, I, I, I can't okay. check, but yeah, it never came close. Yeah, so I saw it, um, and actually, I saw it twice. Ooh. <laughs> I saw it once in the UK and once in LA, because <laughs> I went to Europe first, <laughs> and it happened to be when I was doing my dissertation. I was like, oh, I better see this just in case it never comes to the U.S. And then it did. And it, it was the same show. Um, but it reminded me that the Batman Live story, it was a Ro- it was Robin's origin. Um, not in fl- not in flashback, though. It was yeah. like in in that time period. And it was really very good. And I thought I feel like this is something that people are kind of missing and that that could make a really good movie. Uh, because it has things that people love, or or maybe people don't love origin stories. Maybe it's just Hollywood loves making them. Um, but it has an origin story, but it has an origin story that has Batman in it. So you get, like, the best of both worlds. You have this origin kind of thing, but Batman is, Batman is already in it. Um, and so I figure, you know, you could have a couple flashbacks to... Bruce Wayne's parents dying, so you're like, oh, yeah, right, his parents died. Because, you know, obviously, he has these moments where he'll be like, I understand what you're going through. And then, oh, right, yeah. Uh, but then you've got Batman, Batmaning it up, um, instead of being like, random rich man is hiking the Alps or the Himalayas or whatever to go seek advice from whoever, like, yeah. uh, whatever. <laughs> Instead, you could just have Batman doing Batman things. That seems more fun. <laughs> yeah. I th- what's the other thing I liked about this episode, too, is just, um, you know, how Bruce would had to, you know, talk to Dick in the flashbacks, telling him, yeah, I know how you feel. My parents were killed, too, and stuff. And, you know, like, does the hurt ever go away? Right. Yeah. It shows a really, it shows a side of Batman that is obviously there um, and has been extremely prominent in the comics, but doesn't always get... Uh, the attention that it de- that it deserves, I think it could make uh, it could make a very good good movie because you don't have to have. I mean, the movie could end. I mean, that's how the Batman Live show was. Yeah. The movie kind of ended, uh, or the show kind of ended with like Dick helping get helping get Zuko. Um, and so often in the comics, that's how it is. They kind of you know sneaks out helps get Zuko, and then at the end, you can be like, "All right, I'm gonna train you for real." And then that's the end of the movie. We don't have to, like, <laughs> you don't have to, you know, show the training montage or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, a lot of these movies, I mean, they got, they sh- they got to modernize it, but, I mean, they should take their example from the animated series because, I mean, that was, like, the best Batman because it's, like, you could let your kids watch any of it, but meanwhile, they didn't talk down to them, and it's, like, adult, there was stuff for adults to enjoy, too. It was, like, you know, it was comp. It was comp- right. Play- but not, you know, it wasn't over anyone's head. Right, and I feel that you could have a movie like that that was kind of like the Batman Live, the Robin origin, and you could have Robin be little, like he's supposed to, although they'll probably make him a teenager. But then if you end the movie with like, okay, he snuck out and did these crazy things to get to go on his own, and he was actually pretty good at it, and that makes Batman realize, and then you just stop the movie, then the next time you make a movie... If you want to have Robin in it, you just jump forward however many years you want and get a grown up to do it. As long as it's not like Batman Forever, where it's, you know, Chris O'Donnell has to go live with uh, Val Kilmer. It's like, why are they making this 30 year old man go live with this? Other? Right, exactly. That's what I mean. It's like you need to have uh, him be a kid yeah. so it makes sense. And then you have, but then you stop the movie, like with the, you know, the candlelight oath or whatever, you know, and then. And then you have a time jump <laughs> yeah. in the next one if you're going to have Robin in it. Or even, I mean, if they want to do a little order, I mean, you could do like a 15 or 16-year-old kid, but make it like a real 15 or 16-year-old kid. Don't say it's like, you know, Chris O'Donnell tr- pretending he's 16 years old. Right, yeah, which it's like, oh, did they, were they even pretending he was 16? It kind of felt like he was no. practically 18, and then it was like, why are you even bothering? But again, again, I mean, even if they were saying he was 17, I mean, he was, you could tell he's older than that. It was. All right, yeah. 
you know, you're supposed to believe this is a, you know, someone who's, you know, under 18. It's like, okay, really? Yeah, it could be, it could be done. You can yeah. find these people out there. I mean, though, uh, on Titans, the, uh, Tegan who plays Raven, she's pretty young. I mean, I think she's about 15 or 16 and she's very good. Really well, sells it. Or at least get somebody who can play young. So, I mean, Tom Holland, who plays Spider-Man now, I mean, I think he's only supposed to be 15 or 16 in those movies. He's 21 in real life. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. He does look young. Yeah, as long as you get somebody who looks young. Right, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, even if they didn't want, if they wanted to have Robin in it, you could make a great movie from Robin's Reckoning, like, right there. Just make the episode. Or- there you go. Or do some of that as flashbacks for a Nightwing movie. Although, I mean, I want a Nightwing movie so bad, but I almost don't just because I want them to perfect it. I want DC to perfect this mo- the movie process. <laughs> yes, first. exactly. It's so, like, I want this movie, but I also don't want this movie. <laughs> don't feel it's a subpar Nightwing, yeah. Because but, I don't... It's like, I'll see it, and I'll try to not, you know, diss on it too much, but it's like, I want it to be good. Yeah. So don't rush it, and don't I don't know. I think they learned a lot from Superman versus Batman, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they don't want to connect everything, that's fine. Just, you know, give us a good, <laughs> give us a good mood. They set up Deathstroke at the end of, um, what was that? Was that Justice League or Batman v Superman? You know, when, Le- oh, yeah, uh, Justice League, when, you know, at that end credit scene, Lex breaks Deathstroke out or something. It's like, there we go. We got a Deathstroke. Let's do, uh, no, oh, yeah, yeah. Judas contract or something. I know the thing is, and whatever. This is just because it's one of those one of those things, and there's a hierarchy in comics. But I mean, Deathstroke, I'm pretty sure was invented for New Teen Titans, oh, yeah. and now he's become more like a Batman villain because it's like, oh, Deathstroke's cool. So now we have to give him to better characters. Like, ah, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> well, I think it, you know it's you know because Batman's so good, they need someone you know who can go toe to toe with him and. Nightwing and you know the best fighters in the world. You need someone who's basically almost a metahuman. Because back in the early nine, it wasn't late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, in Deathstroke's book, I think they had him beat Batman in a fight. Sorry, and and they had him beat what? They had him beat. They had had him beat Batman in a fight, but it was Deathstroke's book, so of course he was going to beat Batman. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing where everyone was trying to bring him in, and it's like no, none of the superheroes could bring him in. So eventually, they just like called in Superman to bring in Deathstroke. Right. And eventually Deathstroke's just like, okay, I'll let Superman take me in the minute he's gone, I'm escaping. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Crazy. Any last thoughts about Robin's Reckoning? Well, again, like you said, what that was that was like the first one that won the Emmy. Of course it is, because it's it it deserved it. <laughs> because yeah. I mean all the animated series episodes were good, but that was probably like you know, the one of the, if not the first one that was like really went deep, you know, emotionally mm-hmm. and all. No, no, just about every level. Right. Yeah, it has. Yeah. But what? All right. So, what are we gonna? T- what episode are we gonna talk next time? I don't know. What do you want to do? Let's say we did a we did a scarecrow, we did a Riddler, we did Robin's Reckoning. That's those are the ones we've done so far, right? Yeah. Oh, what's the name? I sound, I sound like an idiot. Uh, what's the name of that episode? The first Ra's al Ghul one. Oh, the Demon's Quest. Yeah. Yeah. Should we do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. The two-parter? Yeah, that's a good one. Although, I mean, Dixon. I was actually laughing because I was scrolling through to find, I think I, I was too far ahead, so I had to go back to Robin's Reckoning, and when I was going past, I went by the Demon's Quest, and the little thumbnail for one of the Demon Quests is like Talia in the background and a big shirtless Batman at the front. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, Dick is like kidnapped for some of that, but should we... uh I don't know, should we cover should we cover that? That's like a two parter, right? Yeah, it's two parts, yeah. Should we should we oh, do yeah, it's a good one. You wanna do that? I mean it's classic anyway, even if it's Yeah, like, for sure it's classic. Even if it's not like all Nightwing or whatever. I mean it's we need to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Although and eventually, so they're probably all on DC Universe. Um, I was gonna say eventually do you want to do like Batman Bad Blood and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can do those. Hush is supposed to come out, right? Sometime. Yeah. I think some I think sometime soon. Uh, I think maybe in the summer. In the summer sometime, yeah. Yeah, I think it might be like July for streaming and August for the physical, or else it's August streaming and September physical, but I'm pretty sure August is involved. Yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, eventually we'll do Batman Bad Blood because I mean that's taking the Batman suit. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a good that's a good one. And they have a Titan, they have a Titans too with him in it. Yeah, we got yeah, play- yeah, the Judas Contract one. Yeah, I think yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. which was not quite as I mean, it was good, but it wasn't quite because mm-hmm. he was already Nightwing, so that part had to be cut out, which was sad. Yeah, he was in that red suit. All right, so are we um, done? I would say, yep. All right, so yeah, join us next month. We'll be covering Nightwing 61. Hopefully we get closer to Dick getting back in the suit when we're covering the two-part uh, Demon's Quest uh, for Batman the Animated Series. So please join us. Uh, send your thoughts on anything we discussed tonight or the upcoming stuff, Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook and uh, Twitter at at Nightwing News and at CL Sidekicks. Uh, follow CL Sidekicks on Instagram. The voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 Capes. And check out all the Capes and Lunatics stuff at capesandlunatics.org. And since Kristen won't tell you, go on, go on Amazon and pick up uh, Dick Grayson, uh, Boy Wonder, <laughs> her, her masterpiece. It is good. <laughs> she won't tell you. All right. But thank you for joining us again. Join us. It's gonna be a good summer, like we said. Uh, we'll get getting uh, Nightwing now when uh, when Titans comes back. Young Justice comes back. I think he's in, he's in Hush. I'm pretty sure, right? I mean, he, he should be. Yeah, I was he was in the comic book yeah, for a little yeah. bit there. So yeah, so. It's weird. We get so much Nightwing and you know everywhere else, but in the comics, it's like he's not in the suit. So I hope they fix that soon. Yeah. And not that I want Tom King to leave, but maybe maybe with his departure, maybe we'll get Dick in the suit faster. That's just weird. So yes, lots of good stuff. Join us next month. It'll be a great summer. And remember, Graysons. Keep flying.